Based on its anatomical features, Nemecolopterus is believed to have been adapted for an arboreal lifestyle. Its long wings and lightweight build suggest it was an agile flyer, capable of maneuvering through forested environments. Its exact diet is uncertain, as direct evidence from its fossilized stomach contents has not been found. Some researchers suggest that it may have been capable of limited gliding or parachuting between trees due to its small size and elongated wings. Like all pterosaurs, Synopterus walked on all fours when it was on the ground, and would have been about the same size as a large house cat. Its legs were fairly long, being nearly the same length as its forelimbs not counting the wing finger, and the wingspan was about 120 centimeters it was an omnivore, likely eating crustaceans, insects, fish, small terrestrial vertebrates, as well as seeds and fruit. The skull of Copodactylus is crowned by a large rounded crest that continues to behind, descending over the parietals. The crest is very thin, about half a millimeter at the upper part. The jaws are toothless. Only a few bones are known from the rest of the skeleton including a partial sternum, a partial left shoulder, a well-preserved right shoulder and humerus, a single partial phalanx from the wing finger, and some rib fragments. Draco differ from many other astrochids by having what appears to have been a tall, deep beak. This has implied a possibly passivorous specialization as opposed to a more general carnivore. It has also been suggested that it may have also been a frugivore and piscivore. Aphrodopedra lived at the beginning of the early Cretaceous. Its remains were found in rocks laid down in a tropical delta environment. Tapajarids are thought to have been fruit eaters, first emerging at about the same time as flowering plants, in the early Cretaceous. They're part of a larger lineage, the Asdarkoids, that includes a large number of terrestrial adapted carnivores like the Asdarkids and Caeringopterids. Because Europe Cara is so old it indicates a role for the Tapajarids in the Cretaceous Terrestrial Revolution, a turnover in the ecosystems of the lower Cretaceous in which gymnosperms were replaced by angiosperms, flowering plants, and new groups of herbivores evolved, adapted to the changed food supply. In the case of tapajarids there could have been a reinforcing interactive cycle between the evolution of fruit and the pterosaurs dispersing the seed. The habitat of Kaiwajra was a desert with dunes. The layers in which the fossils were found had been deposited in a lake in the desert, probably the bones had been exposed at the surface around the lake for a time and were then by storms blown into it, eventually sinking to the bottom. Fossil plants, tapajarids are often assumed to have been herbivores, have not been found, so there are no direct indications about the food source. Likewise, remains of invertebrates have not been discovered. Comparisons between the scleral rings of Tapajara and modern birds and reptiles suggest that it may have been cathemeral, active throughout the day at short intervals. As a living pterosaur, its crest would have almost certainly been a display device as opposed to functional appendage. By the time of the mid-Cretaceous when Tapajara lived, the pterosaurs had developed a multitude of different crests of various shapes and sizes. Had the reason for the crest been aerodynamic, it would have been likely that the pterosaurs would have developed only one or two different kinds to suit different lifestyles. The skull of Tsungaripterus, 50 cm long, bore a low bone crest that ran down from the base of the skull to halfway to the beak. Its head and neck were together almost one long. Its most notable feature is its long, narrow, upcurved jaws with a pointed tip. It had no teeth in the front part of its jaws, 
which were probably used to remove prey from cracks in rocks or the sandy, muddy inland environments it inhabited. It had knobby flat teeth more to the back of the jaw that were well suited for crushing the armor of shellfish or other hard objects. Domicodactylus had teeth in raised sockets, and although not preserved, they would probably have been relatively small. This adaptation has seen Domicodactylus placed within the group of pterosaurs that are noted for potentially having shellfish diets. The mandible has a short symphysis. There are 16 tooth sockets, from which the teeth themselves have been lost, in each dentary. Many Tsungaripterids have often been seen as Durophagus species that cracked shellfish with their convex teeth. Ordocipterus shows a moderate bulge in its teeth, but not the extreme outgrowth that would have been useful for cracking. The broad lower jaws suggest a different way of eating, though G does not consider this issue. Noripterus lived in the same time and place as the larger Tsungaripterus, in formations that indicate the presence of extensive inland lake systems. Because it had a more lightly built skull with weaker, more slender teeth than its larger contemporary, it is likely that the two pterosaurs occupied separate ecological niches. Like most Tsungaripteroids, it was well adapted to a terrestrial lifestyle, bearing thick bone walls and stoutly bodily proportions. With the emergence of birds during the Cretaceous period, pterosaurs had to face intense competition in the ecological niche of small flying organisms. That is why many of them became larger and more terrestrial, in order to occupy a different ecological niche. Some studies suggest that it may have exhibited gregarious behavior. It likely occupied a specialized ecological niche as a coastal predator, utilizing its passivorous adaptations to exploit the resources available in marine or nearshore environments. It was once been suggested that Tepuxuara was a fish eater at the coasts of South America, while some deviant hypotheses include the possibility it was a fruit eater. However, based on its asdarkoid affinities, it was most likely a terrestrial omnivore or carnivore. A sub-adult specimen described by paleontologists had not yet fully developed its crest, which supports the suggestion that the crest was a marker for sexual maturity. Koiangopterus is known to have been a toothless pterosaur and was assumed by Wang to have been a piscivore or fish-eater but other relevant details of its paleobiology will have to await a more detailed description. Caeongopterids in general are now thought to have been similar to as darkid pterosaurs, implying that they were probably crane-like terrestrial omnivores and opportunistic carnivores. Apoteramphus was part of a diverse assemblage of pterosaurs native to Cretaceous North Africa, which inhabited an area offering a variety of ecological niches including ponds, lakes, marshes and river banks. However, it is unclear which exact niche it would have inhabited within this ecosystem. Some suggest that it may have been a generalist or piscivore with a lifestyle. While it's hard to tell for certain from such meager remains, Leptostomia might have been part of the Asdarkoid lineage. It had an incredibly long beak that tapered to a thin delicate tip, resembling the beaks of modern probe-feeding shorebirds more than any other known pterosaur. It may have been specialized for the same sort of ecological niche, poking around in mud and shallow water for small invertebrates and snapping them up, possibly detecting its hidden prey using supersensitive nerve endings in the tip of its beak. The toothless beak of Zekiangopterus was long and pointed. 
Although there was no crest on top of the head, what appears to be a reinforcing crest ran along the base of the lower jaw. The antorbital fenestra was greatly enlarged taking up roughly half the skull area. This would greatly reduce the weight of the head. Its long legs meant that it would have had a high walking gait while on the ground. This supports the hypothesis that the Asdarkids hunted like modern-day storks. Cryodraken was officially described in late 2019. With a wingspan of around 10 meters, it was similar in size to its close relative Quetzalcoatlus, but it dates to about 10 million years earlier making it one of the oldest as darkets ever found in North America. Despite Alberta being located somewhat closer to the Arctic Circle than it is today, the climate was warm temperate and temperatures rarely dipped below freezing, with short nights in the summers and only a few hours of daylight in the winters. Hatsigopteryx was an enormous pterosaur, considered one of the largest flying creatures that ever lived. It had an estimated wingspan of around 10 to 12 meters and is estimated to have weighed between 500 and 1,000 kilograms it is believed to have been an apex predator in its ecosystem. Its massive size and robust jaws suggest that it likely preyed on medium-sized dinosaurs and other terrestrial animals. It may have used its beak to grab and tear apart prey. While it was capable of flight, it is thought to have spent a significant amount of time on the ground, similar to modern-day birds. Its robust build and strong legs indicate adaptations for walking and potentially even running. Like other pterosaurs and dinosaurs, it became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period. Its massive size and terrestrial lifestyle highlight the remarkable variety of body plans and ecological roles that pterosaurs occupied during their reign as flying reptiles. The single known bone of Arambrugiania is actually part of a neck vertebra and not a bone from the hand at all. Although incomplete, the vertebra is clearly an asdarkid. Comparisons to other asdarkids show that it was one of the largest of all pterosaur. They had a lifestyle that focused on hunting prey on the ground including amphibians, lizards, and baby dinosaurs. This is similar to large predatory birds like marabou storks and shoebills of today. Although the remains of Arambourgiania are incomplete, it is assumed to have hunted in a similar fashion. The phosphate beds where Phosphatidraco was discovered were formed under relatively deep water off the coast of the African mainland in the final one million years of the Mesozoic. While pteranodontids and nyctosaurids were aerial fishers, asdarkids like Phosphatidraco were not, and the asdarkid specimens found in the mines likely died in flight, or were washed out to sea after death. As darkids have historically been considered skim feeders that caught prey from water in coastal settings, but it has since been suggested that the context in which their fossils are found and their morphology, such as their long, stiffened necks, is more consistent with them having foraged terrestrially like storks or ground hornbills, but this is still debated. Quetzalcoatlus was abundant in Texas in a fauna dominated by Alamosaurus, in a semi-arid inland plain. It had precursors in North America and its apparent rise to widespreadness may represent the expansion of its preferred habitat rather than an immigration event, as some experts have suggested. The study of the flight of Quetzalcoatlus, a genus of giant pterosaur, is a subject of ongoing scientific investigation. Researchers have used computational modeling and biomechanical analyses to better understand its flight capabilities. Through these studies, scientists have proposed that it likely employed a combination of soaring and powered flight strategies to stay aloft despite its massive size.